Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today it's gonna to be a little bit different. It's gonna be more of a chat. So if you're not up for a chat, just, you know, move on. If you are, grab a cup of tea, get a blanket, get cozy. I wanna talk about my experience on ADHD medication today. Just mostly as something for me so I can reflect and see if there's been any major changes, which I think there have been. But also for some of you, if potentially this is a path that you're looking to go down and you're just wondering what it's like. So we're gonna go back to day one. I received my ADHD diagnosis pretty recently and I think it was pretty much the day after I received it I began to take ADHD medication. I've tried a few different types so far and for those of you who aren't aware ADHD medication there are a heap of them. The most commonly used ones are stimulants and there are ones that stay in your system for a really long amount of time and there's some that stay in your system for a short amount of time. The first one that I was prescribed was Ritalin short acting. And the first day I took it I went walking with my family we took our dog walking and I went to the gym as well. The first sensations that I noticed were like a pins and needles type of sensation in my hands and my feet. And that was about half an hour after I took it. And then a general kind of lightness is how I would describe it. I noticed almost instantly how much quieter my head seemed. So if you imagine my head went from sounding something like this. <laughs> And then after I took the medication for the first time, it went to something sounding like this. And I don't know if you can get the picture from that, but when that's constant, and it has been my constant for my whole life, it's kind of life changing. It was just so much quieter. I describe it as if I was able to like pick out a train of thought rather than having 50 million trains of thought all happening at once. I was actually able to like be like, Yoink, that's the one I wanna focus on right now. I definitely think it allowed me to be more present. An example of this, I think this was the first day that I took my medication, but I was looking up at the birds and the clouds in the sky. And this sounds so cheesy, but I'm usually so hypervigilant and there's so many things that I'm focusing on. I can't just observe and be at peace. And so I was so busy looking up and appreciating the fact that when I look and focus on one thing, that's all I'm focusing on and I'm not having all of this little background chatter. And then I stepped in dog And this is honestly something that has never happened to me because I am normally so aware of every bit of information that is happening around me. I'm not able to tune any of it out. I do have anxiety as well. So it absolutely could be the fact that there's two diagnoses kind of interacting with each other, but the difference that it made in my brain from before taking the medication and then afterwards was insane. So it's definitely been a welcome change to be able to be a bit more present and to feel like I have space before I do things. It is kind of upsetting knowing that I could have potentially been feeling this way or feeling this peace for a lot longer because I received a diagnosis when I was in adulthood. But I know this is the case for a lot of people so I just want to know if you feel that period of mourning or you feel like, oh, it could have been like this. You're not alone in that feeling and it sucks. And I think you just have to take the time to grieve for yourself. It also made me reflect on the fact that ADHD has impacted my life in so many different ways that I wasn't aware of until now. And until I have that comparison point and that level of peace where I'm able to focus and be present. And I wouldn't have had that if I hadn't tried the medication. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I have currently tried about three different types of medication. I have tried a Ritalin short acting, which lasts for about four hours. I've tried a Ritalin long acting, which lasts for about eight hours. And then I have tried Concerta or Concerta. Concerta. I've tried this, which lasts for about 12 hours. And I'm just gonna look at a few different areas and tell you what I noticed being on each of them. So first of all, I thought I would talk about sleep. Now, because ADHD medication is most likely a stimulant, then your sleep can definitely be affected. I noticed this primarily on like the first couple of days that I was on the medication. It took me a little bit longer to fall asleep, but having got used to it, I can calmly say now that it hasn't affected my sleep. When I took the Ritalin long acting for the first time, there were massive crashes afterwards. The Ritalin long acting felt like less of an intense up. It was just kind of like mild like this throughout the day. But once I reached that point at like 8 p.m. for example, I crashed 
hard. I got up quite early when I started taking this because I didn't want it to affect my sleep. So I was taking it at like six or seven in the morning. So then I would crash at like three or 4 p.m. Freaking hard. <laughs> like I would desperately need to nap or rest or just being aware, I think that the long acting can cause a massive crash. At least it did for me. But like I said, now that is the one that I am currently taking and it doesn't have that same kind of crash effect. Or when I know a crash is coming, I try and walk or I try and move and do something that I know is gonna try and help me keep my energy up. As for appetite and how the medication affects that, I noticed a pretty significant decrease in appetite when I was on the short acting medication and the eight hour medication. So both types were Ritalin for me. I was not hungry at all. I had one day where I took it and then I was so nauseous. I had headaches and I realized I hadn't eaten. Getting into some sort of like schedule or having eating with family or eating with Callum allowed me to remember to eat and that made it okay significant issues were definitely present when I forgot to eat. I noticed the Concerta or the 12 hour medication didn't affect my appetite as much. And that's because like hour by hour, it's probably a slightly lower dosage, but I did have more anxiety and things like nausea and certain symptoms like that. When I forgot to eat, it's really important to eat because it can lead you to just feeling like blah afterwards. The next part I want to talk about is my mood and a large part of ADHD I have realized for me at least, and it might not be for everybody, is kind of like an emotional dysregulation. I feel previously that I would be very reactive to things. So if something made me mad, you would know about it very quickly. Or if something made me sad, I would know about it very quickly. I didn't really have the space to be able to stop and reflect and then act. But being on Ritalin allowed me to have that space, which was interesting. So it meant, meant that I could be more thoughtful with my actions, I felt at least. I also noticed that I would have super high highs and super low lows. And the medication allowed me, instead of being like this, it was more like this. And I felt kind of more like myself. I don't know how to explain that. The best way I can describe it is, you know when you're having an argument with someone and then people I've heard in the media or like therapists have said this and you should like, take five seconds in your brain before you say something. So you want to give yourself a space between thought and speech. And that just was non-existent. That is not a thing for people with ADHD or for me at least. There's no ability for me to be like, stop. Is this a good thing to say? But now I do actually feel like I have some of that time. So I'm a lot less frustrated. Like I'm able to communicate in a way that I feel is more fitting to how I feel internally. And I think it's kind of reduced a lot of that impulsivity. Mm -hmm. There is of course still some. Now one of the big areas on how ADHD medication affects you is how it changes your ability to focus. I've heard some people describe ADHD, which technically stands for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder as more of not an issue with actually having attention, but it's an issue with being able to regulate attention. So ADHD brains are like interest-based learners is what I've heard. So if something bores me, I have almost zero capacity to be able to do it. And I know that's the case for everybody, not just ADHD brains, but particularly the case for ADHD brains. But after being on medication, I noticed that I was able to do the things that previously I would have procrastinated for a really long time. I felt less distracted. I noticed a massive decrease in like sensitivity to noises and things like that. So for example, if people are chewing too loudly, I would like focus on that and I couldn't like block it out. But when I was on the medication, those kind of noises or extraneous details felt much less. Another example is if I had an appointment in the afternoon, I would typically not be able to do anything before that appointment because I would be so stressed that I wouldn't be ready on time and that I would miss the appointment and that would be it. I could only do one thing at a time, one appointment <laughs> at a time. But after taking the medication, I feel like I have been able to balance my attention in a better way. So even though I have that appointment, I know that I'll make it and I have more time and more space in my head to focus on other things that I need to do, even if it's only for like 15 minutes or whatever. That way my whole day doesn't revolve around something that I'm doing once. Does that make sense? Now I also mentioned that I struggle with anxiety and like racing thoughts and things like that. And I have noticed that being on medication has made my anxiety less. 
And I saw that like week by week you go in usually to check with a psychiatrist if you've just started out on your medication. And each week we saw that my symptoms of anxiety were decreasing and that was insane to me. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that when I'm on medication, what I say I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do it and I can trust myself and I don't feel anxious about not completing tasks because I know that they're going to get done. I'm not worried about the fact that I haven't done work or I haven't done what I needed to because the medication allows me to be able to do it. And that's something that did not happen before. So even though the anxiety isn't solely to do with the ADHD, it's definitely affected by it. And it's been really interesting to see how, for me, that has decreased since I've started medication for ADHD. The final area that I wanted to touch on for me specifically, because I'm a strength and conditioning coach, is exercise. I have noticed that when I gym, I am so much better able to be present when I am on ADHD medication. I previously would be distracted by the noises. I couldn't listen to music because it feels like too much information. Really struggle with having to be on a certain program for a long amount of time. Genuinely in my life, I think I have personally completed one gym program. I feel kind of ashamed to say because I'm a coach and I know the importance of sticking to things. Having an ADHD diagnosis has kind of made that make sense to me. So some structure is good because it helps us get into a routine and tells us when we're gonna do things, but ADHD brains don't really want to feel stuck or we want things to feel novel and new. And I didn't know that before I had a diagnosis. So having that has allowed me to be a little bit more kind to myself. And it's allowed me to realize that, okay, I just have a brain that works slightly differently. I'm gonna adjust how I program for myself or how I get my coaches to program for me. And then we'll take it from there. So for example, with the gym, I've decided that instead of trying to hit like a four week block or I'm just gonna break it up into two weeks and then I'll change it up and I can alternate between blocks and I can do what works for me. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And that way I can play it by ear based on how my brain feels that week. And this kind of brings me to the last point that I wanted to touch on. And this is what changes have I made? I wanted to talk about this because if you have ADHD and you haven't tried medication, or if you suspect you might have ADHD and you want to go down that process or whatever, I really want to highlight that it is not a magic cure when used in isolation. An example I have of this is that one day I took the medication, but I didn't have any plans or structure in place for that day. So instead of directing my focus where it needed to be, I just got really into Sudoku and I played Sudoku for like eight hours. I'm not even joking. So it's all well and good to have something that allows you to increase your focus or improve your mood, etc. But if you don't take that alongside trying to implement some sort of other change in your life, whether that be asking for help when you need it or being kinder to yourself or I don't know, changing up your gym program, for example, then I don't think that all of your problems are gonna be solved by medication. So the biggest changes that I have made, and look, I say this, take it with a grain of salt because I'm sure it's not actually the case. It's being able to be more gentle with myself. If I'm procrastinating, I'm trying not to beat myself up so much about but it. But I'm rather trying to acknowledge the new information. I'm trying to acknowledge, okay, this is how my brain works. So what can I do? <sighs> Look, I feel kind of guilty saying this because in all honesty, I'm still beating myself up and I think that's gonna take a long amount of time to change. It is okay if our brains work differently and it's not something to be ashamed of because we've been taught to be ashamed of it. And like I said, with another change in the gym, I'm gonna try and go for a less structured approach and see how that works for me. If I interrupt people or if I randomly change topics of conversation, I do feel bad about but it. But I've decided to just kind of run with it and see where that goes. And so far it's been like very entertaining for my friends and Callum and myself. I am learning that that impulsivity is a part of ADHD. And because we live in a world where that's not necessarily the most socially acceptable thing to do. I have obviously, like many of us, experienced a great deal of shame about it and I genuinely just thought I was a bit of a dick before. I'm now learning that that's a part of how my brain works and so I'm trying to ask for help. So even though I feel better able to manage a lot of the symptoms or things that come like up, like impulsivity or hyperactivity, it's still there. I don't think that's ever going to go away but having the tools has allowed me to feel like I'm managing a it. bit better. But I mean, it's a learning process. I only just got diagnosed. So there's a lot that I still need to learn. I hope that gave you guys some insight. If not, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and 
and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. I'm going to get back to posting some fitness-based content next week because I feel like chatting about fitness. That's pretty much what the channel is going to be at the moment. Just whatever comes up in my life that I want to talk about is what we're going to talk about. And I hope that it maybe helped you if this is something that you're thinking about doing. I really think that it has helped me. So I guess we'll see where this journey takes me. And I hope you guys are kind to yourselves this week because you deserve it. You really, really do. Bye.